uh, that uh, Terry Chibolte honeys or meads, and they didn't seem the same, and we were using the same ingredients and stuff, it's because you might not have gotten that same density of honey that you had before. Well, that's where I think come that, out. that honey, honey is just like grapes. You know, as, as you know, each year has a different ter- terroir. You know, it's it's a different uh, different growing season. It's a different different uh, you know uh, sort of uh, conditions that you have, and and that all depends on the you know the the final product. How much rain? How much heat? How much all that stuff? Sure, depends. totally. You know, I I think that's that's where mead and wine, uh, as we know, wine, grape wine honey wine and grape wine are are pretty much equal in that it really depends on what happens that year and what kind of honey you get at the end of that year for particular year you know yeah it's and 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 it, and it also you know the uh, when I teach my mead making classes there are three things that make mead water honey and yeast and yeah. every yeast is going to change the flavor of your mead. The honeys are going to change the flavor of your mead, and the water is going to change the flavor of your mead. So you can use that exact same recipe and just change one of those three elements, and the mead has totally changed from alcohol content. I mean, we've I've used distiller's yeast, and if you get tequila stiller's yeast, and when you make tequila and you put it in there, you do get a harsher uh, Unlashing from the meat than you would from a uh, a uh, wood uh, like if you're going to make a whiskey distiller's yeast. Sure. Because then it because they have a wood it has a wood spiral taste in it, and that's just from the yeast. The yeast can change the flavors as well as uh, if I got clover honey from Oklahoma and clover honey from Wyoming. The seasons, the climates are changed. It's clover honey, the same type of clover. It might be white Dutch clover, or it might be purple asbestos clover. Right? It, it, it depends. You know, not every plant is the same in the location and the water. Uh, man, I went to a facility in Gillette, Wyoming, that the guy uh, originally founded and made Pyramid and Red Hook that were bought out, mm-hmm. and he was making a brewery in Gillette hoping that he would be bought out a third time and he had a water purification and analytical machine that was like 1.2 million dollars that he could make the exact same water anywhere in the world nice that if you brought him water from somewhere he could copy that water with this machine wow so uh, i mean man cool. that's phenomenal work did it make awesome mead? That's the only thing I care about. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I never got to use this machine. I get most of my water from the mountains of, uh, here in Wyoming. That I have a retreat up in the hills that has a natural fresh spring water that comes out of the out of the ground that just runs out into a, a stream. And I go in and I dig a hole and go in with a pump and I pump off the water and I use it. And it makes That's a good, sweet water. Because here I... I, I I'm in Miami Beach, and I got to figure out Deer. Uh, uh, the best water I can get is Deer Park, New York. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, nasty. <laughs> I, know. I had one guy call me all the way from I think he was from Italy or somewhere. And uh-huh. He says you should try this water. It was like eighty bucks for seven hundred fifty milliliters of this water. Oh, it's the best water in the world. And yeah. Or no, so yeah, yeah. I was like buying a wine bottle full of water for almost eighty bucks. Ah, Are you okay. kidding? I drank that much rum before doing this show. That's crazy. <laughs> I, that's yeah, that's I was, yeah. That's. I was like, what, <laughs> it better be encrusted in jewels and I know, shit, right? man. Yeah, gold plated water <laughs> is what it better be. <laughs> and and that's worth less, less than that, and it's got gold bucks. in it. Yeah, right. No, and the funny thing is that the whole. The whole rum costs less than twenty bucks for the whole seven hundred fifty milliliters. And you know you're gonna and you're gonna know it yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you're for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and you know, do you have any, any of you guys that you know what Goldschlager is? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Gold, we yeah. were just we were just mentioning that. Saying, yeah, that's got gold in it. Yeah, and it's not eighty dollars a bottle. Nah, we all know what that is. 
so I, I make a, uh, I call it Grindel's Tears. Mm. And uh, just here recently, I went to the Orpheus uh, mead making vet in Colorado and I entered four meads. I, I entered a Friar Tuck to Apple Braggot. I entered just Grindel's Tears. I entered a macadamia nut honey, or a macadamia nut mead that was made with macadamia nuts and macadamia nut honey. Oh, nice. And then I uh, put in a, uh, uh, just a, a specialty mead that we, that we make, or my, it was mead. And my king's mead took first of historical. My friar took apple braggot took second in braggot. The macadamia nut took uh, honorable mention for spices and nut meads and my Grindel's tears they loved but they they, they said the oxidization in it was too harsh and it's because uh, we put gold in it it has gold that floats around in it and it's made with a salted uh, brine water we make a brine water using salt and then we melt caramels and stuff in the salt water and then so we it's add, a uh, it's a salted caramel gold mead yeah, it's Grindel's Tears, right? Like right. Your tears are salty. Yeah, and, oh, yeah. And then you have the, right? So that's basically why we call it Grindel's Tears. Is it's a salty, sweet taste with the gold flakes in it, so we captured the tears of a god. <laughs> that's the story behind it. That's and pretty it, cool. They, they loved it. They loved the taste, but they said the gold made it had an oxidization taste. So I don't know if any of you guys ever added a metal. To your meats or anything like that to see if it did if it made any taste like that for you guys. I've done weird things like chucking the odd car part in of, on my meats for some of my weird emails, um, just to make sure people are reading my disclaimers on my bottles. But uh, um, I don't usually leave anything on metal long enough to matter. But gold should be inert; it shouldn't give you any taste. Yeah, say especially if it's. That's I'm assuming thought, it was like, food yeah. grade. Was it like gold leaf, like what they use in food? Yeah. It was yeah. Gold which, leaf. That has no flavor. I mean, I've used it. I've used it on all sorts of things, and technically speaking, it has no flavor. But I don't know what it would do if you fermented on it. Are you adding it after or during the ferment? Uh, after. So after it shouldn't affect it. In it then, yeah, I, so I it's didn't know where they were getting the oxidization taste from. It, it, uh, was oxid, it had an oxidization taste. And, like, oh, man, well, assuming that, assuming that it, yeah, assuming that it does have some oxi- uh, you know, ox- oxidation, um, I'm skeptical that the gold would cause that. There's some other yeah, thing. Yeah, I wouldn't have yeah. gold. I would say that yeah. maybe. I wait, yeah. What? Okay. What yeah. else? Yeah. What it's else was in it? Oh, what was that, David? Sorry. Yeah. Right. You're putting I mean, aluminum in there. I would expect that, but yeah. yeah. Um, so what else? Okay, it's got gold, gold, and that's after the ferment. In the meat itself, it had uh, the salt. Uh, you well, got brined had, water and caramel, and what else? We had brine water, caramel, and clover honey. Uh huh. And then it was aged one year in a wood in a wood barrel. Mm. In a wood barrel, was the gold added that while it was in the, the barrel? There's where the no. oxidation might have happened. Yeah, that could very well was be. The yeah. transfer of the wood barrel. No, in the wood yeah. barrel. How much headspace was in the in barrel? The and barrels barrel. breathe. So. Yeah. Oh, it's a little one-gallon barrel that we got from a little distillery. That. <laughs> it was. It was only. We've only used it for meat. I only have one other wood barrel that we, that a gentleman uh, sent me from the Jameson Brewery in Ireland that we used to do some stuff with, but it was just a little wooden barrel that we had. I mean, yeah, because the the only metal I've ever added to my alcohol was handcuffs, and they were stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> well, stainless steel shouldn't do anything either. No. Yeah, it, it, didn't make, it didn't make any difference to the flavor. Yeah, well, no, AJ can't laugh. Shape, she puts car know, parts right, in hers, right. so. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, yeah I think I put the, the gear shifter in one. <laughs> right. And I put it through the dishwasher first. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, right. Chateau well, Chevette, I got to chuck a piece of Chevette in now and that, just that's see if right. people are paying attention. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's weird that it would be oxi- oxidized, Mike. That uh, I, I wouldn't blame the gold, though. 
No, I don't. No, it's not the yeah, gold. Uh, no, that's non-reactive. No, it couldn't it possibly gold. have done that that I can think of. It's an inert. It's pretty much an inert metal there. It's not. It's not going to do anything. And I don't you know, know what caused it. My wife said, "Just be happy, dude. You put in four meads and you place three out of four. Yeah, Why yeah. Do don't, 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 don't <laughs> fash yourself over the one that didn't place. Yeah. <laughs> and besides, if you yeah. like it and your friends like it and everybody else likes it, who gives a shit what the judges said? <laughs> well, see, and that's uh, one thing that 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 man, I've I've, I've been to. Man, I had a great uh, Chipotle cherry mead at at Drake." Brother Drake's in Ohio. Oh yeah, and it was super good. Yeah, it was super good. And then I had an apple pie mead that they had there. And they said this is a, this is our award winning mead. And I didn't like it. I've, I've kind of noticed as I go to I've been to Hunter's Moon Meadery. I've been to, I mean I've been to a lot of meaderies. I love going and trying to see how I'm going to build my meadery and mm. and look at the different stuff that people do and. So a lot of the stuff that I win wars, I don't really like the taste of. <laughs> and I like my my need to have a bite to it. And a lot of the meats that I see that are winning are like 8% to 9% alcohol. And I was like, you know, I'm not a huge professional meat maker on a level that some of these guys are. You know, I... I pump out a lot of meat. It's only due to the fact that I have lots of honey I can use. Mm -hmm. And I like playing with it. But, you know, the some of the meats, man, I, I don't think have a lot of flavor to them. And they're, you know, they're, I guess the, it must be the clarity and the smell. I, you know, I'm not a uh, a judge. so I, I haven't taken a judge's course. I base all my meats on what I like to drink. I make a white Belgium chocolate mead, and it looks like dirty, soapy water. I mean, that's, it looks just like someone dumped the, the dish sink water in a bottle. Well, it's, I mean, there's a lot of discussion. Water, it, it tastes just like chocolate. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of discussion on clarity and how uh, clarity affects flavor. Because, obviously, if there's more stuff in the mead, there's going to be more flavor profile in the mead. Whether that's good or bad depends on the mead and, and what's left. But, um what happens with a and lot what of it's contributing and what it's contributing yeah but when you clear you know when you clear a meat all the way out and in well, many commercial cases filter it to make sure it's there so you don't have you know crap settling out of the meat while it's sitting on the shelf and and a lot of them do that then you're you know you're necessarily changing the flavor profile somewhat at that point in time and and that's a decision that each commercial meadery has to make because you have a you have a marketing and perception thing there where people see a cloudy fuzzy looking mead they're going to have thoughts about that that may or may not be favorable to that mead. I mean, people are plenty fine with beer with floaties in it because people make a beer with floaties in it forever. And it's, so it's not supposed to be clear, especially the darker it gets, the less clear it's supposed to be. You know, but, but with mead, people think of it like wine and you never see thick, goopy wine with stuff in it. I personally don't mind a mead that's cloudy. You know, I mean, I, I find that there's, some of those are the best tasting meads, but that's my personal personal taste and I'm not prejudiced because of you know wine expectations but you know there are people and I've heard it said on many occasions oh I went and this mead and this mead and this mead had all this settling at the bottom so I didn't buy them you know so Man, I would I know I would too but <laughs> that's that's us that's though that's you know good stuff that's in the meat and, yep. and and I'm totally with you there, but a lot of people aren't. And so that when you go commercial, that's a decision you're going to have to make. Is that something that your market will accept? Because not all of them will. You know, it just depends on where you're at. So, you know, it's it's that kind of thing. But, you you know, I mean, you're right. It's I'm one of those, and this is one of the reasons I don't enter competitions. Is I want to drink Madame Mead the way I like Madame Mead. And, you know, and if they don't like it. Tough. <laughs> Tough patooties. Nobody's ever complained yeah, I, when I brought it with me to an event and passed it around. So, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying is everybody got drunk. And when they said, oh, this is a great wine, I was like, oh, blasphemer. 
this isn't no goddamn line. Right? It's, uh, <laughs> oh, I guess Wisconsin is know, showing. 